Hello, my name is Richard Capone, and I'm the CEO and co-founder of Let's Go Learn. Before I provide you with an overview of Let's Go Learn, I have to first briefly cover assessment technology and reflect on where we are today. On a positive note, assessment technology in education is evolving and getting better. Generation 1 testing was paper and pencil. Generation 2 testing saw the conversion of large-scale accountability testing into assessments like the PARC or SBAC. But here's where things have become more challenging. We see this gap between generation two and three testing, and that's because there needs to be a jump, a leap in how data is transformed in order to meet the need of personalized learning. Personalized learning requires data that is able to help teachers in the classroom, teacher data teams, and site leaders analyze what is going on and how to move forward. And of course, the student comes into the picture as well. So we definitely need to get to generation three and four in order to have personalized learning. So how do we do this? There's three points I want to cover. First, you have to treat learning as a science and follow a process. I can't tell you how many districts create plans without pedagogical considerations at the very top. This is akin to saying you're putting the cart before the horse. Next, students have to be brought into the process. Students need to know why they may be struggling or doing well. When they are engaged, success is much easier. Fortunately, this is finally much simpler to do today. And finally, third, most districts have some sort of personalized learning, data use, or small group instruction initiative for teachers. But unfortunately, in 80% of the cases today, it is not being implemented well because the threshold for success is too high with today's diverse classroom. We have to lower this threshold to make it easier for teachers to do this. So why let's go learn? First, we're providing a genuine granular diagnostic data. This is really key. If the data is not right, you cannot move forward. It's like saying you have a fuzzy photocopy. Once it's grainy, you can't make it sharp again, right? So you need to start off with very granular data. And this brings me to my next point, that is actionable. Data needs to be actionable. Teachers need to be able to understand, what do I do with this? And the same thing for all stakeholders, which include parents, students, principals even administrators. So let me back up a little bit and talk about two types of assessment models. One is st uh, the standards model and one is the diagnostic model. The standards model is what most people are used to. They always ask, is your assessment aligned to the standards? Hey, I say, that's great. A lot of assessments are, but that's not the model you want for generation three and four assessment because a standards model just looks at the grade level the student is at and says, okay, in reading, are they above, at, or below? I'm just really concerned about whether they can read the story. A diagnostic model says, what are the components of reading? High frequency word, phonics, decoding, spelling, vocabulary, comprehension, all of these. And a diagnostic model moves up and down across each of these subtests until it finds an instructional point. In mathematics, it's similar. Most standards assessments just look at large strands like numbers and operations, measurements, geometry, and they'll say whether a student's at or above or below. But again, a diagnostic model gets very granular and says, okay, specifically in addition, specifically in uh, 2D objects, specifically in exponents, where is the student? And regardless of their grade level, it goes up and down until it finds their instructional point. This is very key. All right, this brings us to our model. The conceptual model is the A and the I, and that is what we follow at Let's Go Learn. And we hope school districts will do this as well. So what this means is you assess, you instruct, and then you adjust, you reassess, whether it's formally or informally, and then you adjust your instruction, make sure it works. And so you go through the cycle. So in the end, everyone learns. When you just go with instruction, it doesn't work because that's saying, I'm just going to follow the book. I'm going to follow the material, the pacing guide, and I'm not going to deviate. And that's a problem. But we also have to recognize the pieces of this. In assessment, there's different types of assessment. There's accountability assessment. There's diagnostic assessment, and again, it's all in the cycle, and the standards are on the outside. The standards is where we want to get to by the end of the year, right? So now let's operationalize this for our teachers and principals. In the classroom level, you have three things you're doing. You're working with a whole class, you're working with uh, small groups, and you're working with uh, personalized learning one-on-one. -on -one. And in order to do this, we want to make sure everyone understands in this operational model, we now are looking at diagnostic data. You cannot use summative data or benchmark data to drive these three components. 
Benchmark data could help you with whole class instruction, if that's all you do. But if you want to do all three, you need diagnostic data. And that's why it's important to share this with your teachers, your principals, and everyone in your district. So this something, some form of this operationalized model needs to eventually be part of your plan. Now again, let's take it one more step further. In today's educational environment, we usually will have something like a tier one, tier two, and tier three, which is response to intervention. Tier one typically are your 85% of your students who are your a majority of your classes, who is the majority of your classroom. And then you have tier two are the students who are pulled out and you have tier three, which are possibly special ed or intensive intervention. But in today's urban school, tier one requires personalized learning, small group, and whole class instruction. So if we know this up front, we need to recognize this and realize that the old RTI model is not going to work. You need diagnostic and progress monitoring data for all three tiers. In the traditional RTI model, you only need diagnostic assessment in tier two and three, which was done one-on-one. -on -one. But now we need it in all of it. Okay, so let's um, take one more step down the road. The diverse district. We need to recognize also that fundamentally districts are very fragmented because you are using some core materials, you're using some pull-out materials, you have different uh, time frames after school, uh, before school. And so what can tie all this together? Well, data can tie this together. Granular, actionable data, Let's Go Learn's data can pull it all together. Our data will tell you which students should go into which intervention. It allow you to measure everything. We also have the LGL Edge series, which is our personalized learning product. Okay, so with this data, let's go back for a second. We can make this happen because we have the right data to help this. And this is what we need to do. We have to do personalized learning, small group, and whole class instruction in, in tier one. All right, so let me summarize this. For the district administrator, you need a deeper level of data. You can't just use standards data. You can't say, I'm gonna buy a benchmark test or something that's gonna predict how I'm doing on the state test. You know, you can still have those kinds of assessments, right? But you also have to have the granular assessment like let's go learn if you wanna to move towards generation three and four. Next, you need to have data that is good for your data teams. We all expect teachers to do it. We expect data teams nowadays, and so we need to arm them with the right data. Now, if we have a granular assessment that's uh, based on a diagnostic model, you can actually measure pre-post of any product or any intervention. Why not require that any intervention being used, you measure, if it's academic intervention, you measure pre-post gains, all right? And finally, we wanna improve the RTI process by having better data. Now, how does this work for the classroom teacher? Well, we want to support flexible grouping. With Let's Go Learn, you can have flexible grouping on a daily basis. The tools provide clear sets of goals for the students. You print out each report and you share it with the students. Students can understand reports because it breaks it down to things that they that they understand. Their um, spelling ability is at the mid-second grade level. Their phonics skills are at the fourth grade level, which is diphthongs. Right, we want to put it into something everyone understands. All right, so I'm now, you can watch, um, we're gonna move into the second part, which we're gonna actually do a live demo.